In this tutorial, we will be discussing semiconductors and band theory. Metals in covalent network structures are solids that result in every atom's orbitals being shared by the entire structure. This means there is a large number of molecular orbitals that have approximately the same amount of energy. This is referred to as the band, the energy band. When two atomic orbitals combine, they produce both a bonding and an anti-bonding molecular orbital. We talked about this in previous chapters. So this is the situation where we have a 1s here, and we have a 1s here, and we have a sigma, and we have a sigma star. Hopefully you remember this. When many atomic orbitals combine, they produce a band of bonding molecular orbitals and a band of anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So if we have lots of sets of these, they start to blend together. And so we have a band of the sigma. We have a band of the sigma star. The band of bonding molecular orbitals is called the valence band. The band of anti-bonding molecular orbital is called the conduction band. So here we go. If we have one lithium, we have one electron. Li2 means we have two valence electrons, so they're sharing the band. We have three, so on and so forth, and then all of these start to blend together to form the valence band. That's where all the electrons are normally. And then the empty orbitals is where they can jump to, the conduction band. At absolute zero, all the electrons will occupy the valence band. As the temperature rises, some of the electrons may acquire enough energy to jump to the conduction band. The difference in energy between the valence band and the conduction band is called the band gap. The larger the band gap, the fewer electrons there are able with enough there are with enough energy to make the jump. So let's take a look at this. If there is no gap, then it's considered a conductor because that means the valence electrons can go up to the next level fairly easily. If it's only a small gap, it's a semiconductor. Some of them can make it through up there, but not all of them. And if it's a very large gap, electrons generally won't be able to make it. And so therefore that's going to be an insulator with nothing getting into the conduction band. In a conductor, the more electrons at any one time that a substance has in the conduction band, the better a conductor of electricity it is. If the band gap is approximately zero, Electrons will be almost as likely to be in the conduction band as in the valence band, and the material will be a conductor. For example, metals. The conductivity of metal decreases as the temperature Semiconductors are a, is a band gap is small. Significant number of electrons will be able to will be in the conduction band at normal temperatures, and the materials will be a semiconductor. Graphite is an example of, of this. The conductivity of semiconductors increases with temperature. So as temperature increases, so will the conductivity. In an insulator, the band ga gap is large. Effectively, no electrons will be in the conduction band at normal temperatures, as the material is, will then be an insulator. Now, how do we make the semiconductors? Well, doping is the adding of impurities in a semiconductor's crystal to increase its conductivity. The goal is to increase the number of electrons in the conduction band. There are two types of these, n-type and p-type. N-type semiconductors do not have enough electrons themselves to add to the conduction band. So they are doped by adding electron-rich impurities, so an atom with a lot of electrons. P-type semiconductors are doped with electrons deficient impurities, impurity, resulting in electron holes in the valence band.
Electrons can jump between these holes in the valence band, allowing the conductivity of electricity. A diode is when you put these two things together. When a p-type semiconductor adjoins to an n-type semiconductor, the result is a p-n junction. Electricity can flow across the p-n junction in only one direction. This is called a diode. This allows the accumulation of electrical energy, which is then called an amplifier. And that explains the general concept of band theory in, in conductivity.